So we're here today with Joel Segrin and he's going to tell us a bit about MVHR systems. So firstly, can you tell us what an MVHR system is? Beautiful, yeah. So an MVHR system is a mechanical ventilation with heat recovery system and so essentially what it's doing is providing forced ventilation of your building. So it's using some fans to achieve that. And how exactly does it work? Okay, so We've got a supply fan that's pushing air and fresh air into your building and that air comes from outside, a clean outside source. We've got filters within the system that make sure any particles are extracted from that and at the same time we're extracting the equivalent volume of air from your wet or odorous areas, so your bathrooms, toilets, laundry, kitchen and at the same time as we said supplying into your bedrooms, living, dining, uh, study, those sorts of habitable spaces. And why would I need this? That's a good question. So essentially when we start to build our buildings a little more airtight we actually need to um, rely more on mechanical ventilation. So no longer can we um, rely on infiltration through our building fabric which we might do with traditional uh, buildings where they're much leakier construction. That said, the uh, leaky construction nature doesn't necessarily guarantee good indoor air quality. So we, we don't know where that air is finding its way through. Open windows, you might say, provide a pathway. Well, they do, but it's an unknown quantity. On a really still day, there's very little ventilation that comes through a window. On a windy day, there might be way too much and the thermal and discomfort may well and truly outweigh the uh, benefits of that. Uh, so in essence, that's what we're doing. We're supplying some air, filtered air in, we're extracting. As we do that process, we're taking the extracted air out through a heat exchanger. And what we're doing is recovering the thermal energy in that uh, process. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's uh, summer or winter. So whether the, the hot air is on the inside of the building relative to the outside or the other way around. The heat transfer process works the same both ways. Uh, and good performance systems in the passive house markets will give you sort of 80 to 90 percent heat recovery efficiency in that process. So how does this fit into a passive house? Good question. So again we talked on the fact that air tightness is really high in passive houses so we can't rely on that infiltration. The other important aspect is in a passive house we're really shooting for energy efficiency as well. We're looking for low a uh, low carbon solution, we're looking for low energy costs and we're looking for comfort. So I'll touch on those two parts separately, the comfort and uh, the low energy. So in terms of energy consumption, what we're saving is um, the need to reheat or cool that ventilation air compared to having an open window. So if with an open window we bought 50 litres a second in, in the middle of winter it might be 5 degrees outside we'd need to use our heating systems to warm that up uh, to a comfortable temperature, which might be 21 degrees. Now with a, a ventilation system with heat recovery, we can actually get that five degree air probably up to around about 17 to 18 degrees through the heat recovery process. Uh, and therefore your heating and cooling systems do much less work. So that's the energy efficiency side. So do they consume much energy? They're consuming around about 35 watts, um, which is not, not a great deal. That's comparable to an old light bulb. Uh, that'll vary a little bit with the size of your project, but they're designed to be uh, low pressure, high performance systems that aren't going to consume uh, much any in the greater context at all. So suitable for uh, off-grid type applications. Uh, and just touching back on the comfort issue that I didn't really explain before, um, the other reason for um, MBHR in a passive house is the comfort factor. So again, using the comparison to an open window, where we have an open window in winter, we've got five degree air coming in. And yes, let's assume it might uh, fulfill our uh, ventilation requirements in terms of the right amount of fresh air. It's still going to be at five degrees. So, and that air is going to come in, it's going to be pushed around the house until it reaches the heater. Uh, but by that stage, it's made you uncomfortable, and we call that thermal discomfort. Uh, mechanical ventilation with heat recovery obviously avoids that process because any air 
actually entering the building through the supplier network has already been tempered by the heat recovery process. Uh, do these systems need much maintenance? So they, so they don't need a lot of maintenance. Um, filter changes are obviously important things. I touched earlier on the fact that they had filters and in fact they have two. They have one on the supply side or the outdoor air side and that makes sure we strip out all our uh, pollen and dust particles and things like that. Um, typically in a passive house um, grade unit that's going to be an F7 filter and that refers to the grade and therefore the fineness or particle size to which it takes out. On the extract side it's a G4, uh, that's a little bit coarser um, but really what we're doing to do with the G4 is just to protect our heat exchanger to make sure if we extract some dust from the house it's not clogging up our heat exchanger. Uh, typically you're going to expect to replace those every six months but it will be dependent on what your outdoor environment is. If you're in a dusty environment or a smoky environment you're going to go through those faster but we find on average six months is, um, is about normal. Cool and if I'm interested how can I find out some more details about MVHR systems? Well, yeah so the Passive House Network is a, is a really good network for um, getting some further information. So. Obviously a uh, membership at the Australian Passive House Association is an awesome starting point. Uh, for individuals they're only a couple of hundred dollars for 12 months so that's a great starting point. This, um, this gives you some leads on um, some Facebook user groups. It also gives you uh, access to uh, Passipedia which is an international Passive House resource. That's got some great stuff on it. Um, it's got a lot of member only stuff and you can really start to drill down into some details. Or alternatively, you can talk to um, some suppliers that are uh, within the Passive House Association group. So they can certainly put you in touch with um, some suppliers who are specialists in those areas and they can help you with um, more customised solutions for your individual projects. Great. And that's a bit of a wrap for today. So hopefully that's given you a quick intro. It is just a little step down the rabbit hole. There is a quite a bit more detail to know but it's not something as a the end user you probably need and it's it's time to start involving some specialists.